Does your duck water look like this? What's a duck? Do you wish it could be like this? Now I'm ducking talking. This video is going to encompass everything in one spot. So this is your go to duck pool setup video. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Miles here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the setup I have for my duck's pool. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when it comes to duck pool water, it's so notoriously hard to keep clean. And uh, I think that's why you see a lot of duck owners, they have the little kiddie pools that they just dump out every day or two. I created a system that one, keeps the duck water clean for like a week to a week and a half, and two, is so incredibly easy to maintain. And it took me only like three years to figure out how to get everything nailed down just right so i have to share this with you so you don't make the same mistakes that i did when you're setting up your duck pool setup or if you're frustrated with your existing setup what you should upgrade to and uh i just want to make you guys' lives easy but before we begin if you're a new duck owner and you just got some little ducklings please let me know in the comments because that's going to mean a lot to me because i was in your shoes once before and I remember looking online for like setups and I want to know like that I'm filling that void that was there when I was a new duckling owner. Um, so let me know in the comments. If you're an existing duck owner, I still love you um, and I'm happy that you're going to look at upgrading your setup. So also let me know how it works out for all of you um, because it means a lot to me, you know, because like I'm taking time putting the video together to help you guys. So to hear feedback like holy crap this is awesome or whatever it means a lot uh one thing to note is uh i'm also using footage from previous videos that like because one of the things is you would ideally need to build a swirl filter and it's super important for like just ease of maintenance and like keeping the duck poop in a certain spot i'm including footage from the past of when i actually built that and uh, it's just easier. So like if you see like the pool's a different color and like stuff looks a little different, that's why. But like this video is gonna encompass everything in one spot. So this is your go-to duck pool setup video. And uh, yeah, let's get going right now. Okay, the pump and filter that I'm pointing to now was the original one that I got with the light in the fountain. It works great, it's just not able to keep up with ducks. So I purchased the Laguna filter, which is now the heart of the system. I run both because the light and the fountain is really good for the ducks. Um, it provides like almost like a night light as well. Uh, so those are the send and return lines that um, run out to the filters themselves. And I use corrugated tubing here, which I do not recommend. I've since replaced one of these lines. This is older footage. And uh, I plan to replace the other line. They just don't last. They don't hold up to the weather and they end up splitting. So just a heads up, they'll work for a while just fine. Um, but over time, the material just becomes really brittle and will split. It will, it'll happen. <laughs> so um, right here, I'm just explaining like how I'm setting everything up. Uh, so these lines, the, the one from the pump runs here to the swirl filter, which is the blue one, which is what I show you how to build later in the video, which is very important. This was key to nailing the duck setup. It's just like, I say the pump's the heart of the system, really the swirl filter is. So it goes from there to the bio filter, which is the black one, and then the return line comes back here. This video was taken today as I did a water change today, but let me show you just how easy it is. Ignore the green algae. It's a constant battle. It blooms overnight and I can't use any chemicals obviously because I have ducks in there. But the first step to do the water change is to open the drain on the swirl filter, which has a hose attached as you can see, and it drains it to a part of the yard that's kind of off in the corner where it doesn't flow back into anywhere. Meanwhile, they're out terrorizing everyone. <laughs> 
So I let the water drain all the way down to the second filter, which is the one in the corner. And then I open the drain plug and drain out the rest. Now, what's really important here is this other drain beneath the pool. Let's have a flashback to the past so I can show you how this works. So what this is, it's actually a drain that's used for gutters. And I've dug out beneath the pool itself and ran the hose out to the corner of the run, just away from everything. I've also put some uh, brick to kind of like gate off that one little area so the overflow doesn't cause any issues in the run itself. Now I lift it up here, you can see I've also since cut out like a little hole section just to make draining easier since there will be feathers in the water at times. Now it's time to drain the swirl filter. So you remove the clamp and you don't really have to worry about that little locking lever. It's not that high pressure of a system. Then you remove the lid. Gently, of course. It, it's kind of suctioned on there. And sorry for the duck poop visual. It's actually not that dirty. So from here, I simply rinse it off as it drains and then I'll use like the uh, the full setting in the water to kind of like agitate all the the debris as it drains so it drains the majority of the uh, the larger matter out from there I give the pool a good rinse as well as the main filter in the corner as it has a lot of debris the next step should you choose to get this filter for the light in the fountain, it also helps filter as you can see, is to clean out all the elements here. Now, instead of filming it again, let's just do a blast from the past. I actually clean it out now in the pool just to kind of not make a mess everywhere, but you can clean it however you'd like. The next step here is to scrub down the liner to remove the algae. Every so often I'll use some bleach to really get it off but it's a really, it's a non-issue, so it's not a big deal. I'll move that blue hose off to the side, so when the water refills, there's always like some debris left over in the system that I don't want going back into the clean water. So I've placed the filters back in, I'm filling it up, just giving you guys some beautiful action shots here. <laughs> One thing that's way off topic, but I have to share it while I'm here, is uh, I bought them this little separate water feeder that they absolutely love. Especially when it rains, you can see how muddy they've made this side of the run. They love just like playing, and then they'll like use that to like clean off their bill and then play more in the mud. So once the pool's almost full, we close the swirl filter back up and turn the pumps back on and get everything circulating again. Now, like I said before, I have that blue hose pointed out to the side of the pool. So you can see how the flow isn't really going here. It's because the swirl filter is still filling up. But once it is, you've got a strong flow and then I place the, the blue hose back in and we're done. Except we have to give them treats. Mealworms, mealworms, their favorite, clearly. <laughs> Miles from the future here, the video is from the past when I first built the swirl filter. So there are some important changes that I've made since then. They're all included in this video along with everything I used and like from the, the entire setup is going to be linked in the description. If there's a broken link, just let me know and I can update it as well. Also, feel free to ask any questions. See you guys, once I open it. <laughs> okay, so got the latch off. Pop this off and uh, I really like the design of the barrel for the application because of this right here. Um, it kind of, for a swirl filter, you want it to collect the waste down here and this uh, step 
kind of will help with that, making it harder once it gets down here to get back up to the top. Okay, so we'll start with the, uh, the input right here. It is all one inch. Um, we've got a barb fitting right here. Then we've got a threaded to slip adapter followed by a uniseal. Then we've got a three inch long PVC pipe and a 90 degree elbow adapter. Okay, so next is the output, which is kind of a little more complicated, but that's why I'm making this video. Um, so we've got, this is all for the majority one and one fourths inch. You could go up if you want, but this is what I chose. So actually it's what my, uh, my bio filter fits. So we've got a, uh, a barb adapter here, followed by the uh, threaded to slip adapter, uh, a uniseal one and one fourth inch once again. And then right here, this pipe is, let me look at my notes, uh, seven inches long. And I measured this so it gets to the center of the barrel size that I'm using, which we'll talk about later, uh, followed by a 90 degree elbow. And then this part, this next series of parts, or these two, are uh, they're not complicated, but you gotta get the sizes right so it works. Um, this guy is a two to one and one fourths inch reducer. So it's, it doesn't have threads on the inside, but it, it fits in here, which I'll show you in a minute. And then it goes to this reducer, which is three to one and one half. I kind of got lucky with the way it fit when I ordered it because I couldn't tell. So this side goes in here and then this side goes in here and it, it reduces that. And the goal is you want a larger output and more surface area to catch the water that's draining out. Um, I got this because my application is for ducks to catch any feathers that happen to get in there because feathers generally float for a while um, and then this will just kind of prevent the majority of it going into the biofilter and clogging it up. And here's a shot of the output just so you can see it put together. So this is going to be in the center of the barrel. Okay, so the last thing is the drain system that I've created here. So uh, it's all one inch. Um, you've once again got a barb adapter. This is starting from the outside. Then you've got a ball valve. And then you've got the threaded to slip adapter once again, followed by a uniseal, followed by another three inch PVC pipe, followed by a slip to this threaded ad adapter, followed by a barb fitting. And then we're gonna attach this. Miles from the future again. So. This is for the bottom drain part and I attempted to make kind of like an internal vacuum which I, I've since omitted so this part doesn't matter at all. All I did was add a little uh, PVC pipe with a 90 degree elbow that's facing down at the bottom. You can see how it looks in the earlier parts of the video. So you can see the vacuum, the hose down at the bottom. You do not need that. All you want is, instead of the hose, you want a little PVC pipe with a 90 degree elbow that faces downward. And it'll drain just fine. Okay, so the tools that you'll need are as follows. Uh, these guys are freaking awesome for cutting both the hose and the PVC pipe. Uh, it's just a PVC cutter that uh, ratchets. Um, and then these guys are to cut holes in the barrel. So you're gonna need two different sizes for the way I have this set up. This is, will it focus? This fitting that you'll need is one and three fourths inch or 44 millimeters. And this fitting is two inches or 51 millimeters. So you'll need those two to cut the holes in the barrel. All right, and then we have some PVC primer and glue as well as some thread sealant. So I'm gonna use a combination depending on the fitting, which I'll explain right here, uh, just so we don't glue everything together. That way, if we need to take it apart, it's, it's possible. All right, so this is the input. So for example, we're gonna be using this guy on these threads, whereas we'll be using this on this connection right here. That way, this is solid 
And then on the inside, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna have it as friction. So once again, this is the output. We're gonna be using this here, this here, and then everything else on the inside is not gonna be glued. And as you guessed it, similar logic here. I might not even glue this because uh, of the ball joint. Um, but yeah, so this guy m probably won't get this on the output. Um, and then this PVC pipe connection will get the glue and then everything else on the inside will be unglued. Okay guys, so this is the layout of my holes for the barrel. So input is right here, output is right here. Keep in mind that this goes up to the top. So, well, I gave you the measurement so you don't really have to worry about the logic behind that. Um, this input, it is placed here. So when it's pointed down, the idea is the water catches this ridge and kind of almost separates, helps separate the solids. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but in my mind, I felt like that would help. Um, then your drain will just depend on how you're setting stuff up, but you wanna put it, you know, you can see how this is curved, so you don't wanna put it to where that uniseal is hanging on that lip. So I put it right here, and keep in mind, it doesn't have to be with the setup at the very, very, very bottom, because we're creating a vacuum for the inside that we actually manually vacuum the bottom. So we just need a good spot for the drain. Miles from the future again. Um, I have to say that the primer and seal the PVC thing, it's, it's good, it's not bad. I don't believe it's necessary at this point. I initially went into it thinking about like, hey, I need to do everything possible. So I don't have to like fix something after I put everything together. And so I did this to minimize the chance of that happening. And I think it's overkill because it's not a, a crazy pressurized system. Like the cement's meant to withstand so many PSI and you know, with that little, it's not a little pump, but you know, it's, it's just like more overkill than you know, you need. So if you want to omit this step, you should be fine. Don't hold me to it, but you should be fine. Similarly with a thread sealer, it doesn't hurt to do it, but you could probably omit it if you'd like to. And obviously we want the valve to either be facing sideways or up. I'm going to go with up. And then got to get a couple wrenches because the inside pipe is spinning. So hold that in place. It's already pretty tight. Let me open this up a little. I hate these style of wrenches. <laughs> we can do a quarter turn and then rotate the inner pipe. How about that? Uh, we'll make it all the way around. Okay, maybe we won't. I mean, I could force it, but you know, you kind of want it to where it's hand tight equivalent. So we're gonna leave it at that. I did about a half turn after. Um, and once again, the only reason I grabbed this wrench was to hold the inner pipe from spinning. Okay guys, this is the output. One thing to make note of for the video, I've actually been sent the incorrect fitting. So I have another one coming. Um, so this, you can, it'll still work, but you need a different barb fitting. But the ones that I have are this side, or are the, uh, the male. So uh, just to note, so you don't get confused in the video, but this is like symbolic installation but this is all how it is. And then this is really convenient for the feathers. Scrape it off, and then you can just actually pull this out just like that. Okay guys, so we are virtually finished with the exception of the output fitting in the barb. Um, so I've showed you everything, the exact measurements for this as well as where to glue and what glue to use. So remember, we use the thread, the liquid thread right here for these barbs. And then from this PVC adapter to this PVC pipe, we used the actual cement uh, that bonds and fuses the pipes together. So this right here is the input. It's gonna shoot the water down, swirl it around, um, and then this is the output as it fills up. It's going to drain out 
Once I have the barb fitting, connect a hose over to the bio filter from Laguna. Um, and I haven't used this yet or this, obviously I just built it. So I can't attest to it, but logically I feel like for my application with ducks, this is going to collect a lot of the solid waste, their poop, <laughs> um, and take a ton of load off of this. Plus this, I'll be able to drain out with this handy dandy vacuum. I'm going to connect this part to like a stick so I can have, you know, control instead of reaching down into the water. Uh, I'll be able to come out, you know, just grab the pole, put that down there and, you know, dragging it along the bottom with the valve open is going to create a vacuum and just suck out all the waste at the very bottom. And then when I'm done, I can just place this hose right here so it's easily accessible. Um, and then, you know, if I want to clean off some of the feathers, pull this out, you know, rinse it off, place it back in real quick, and then put the lid back on and be good. One important note is that the pressure filter I went with has these little scrubbers on the side that brush against the internal uh, foam filters and it dislodges any debris, um, in this case duck poo, uh, to be discharged. So you don't have to open everything up so frequently. Super convenient was a big part of the reason why I chose this particular filter. One important thing to note is that you need to create a seal from the lid to the barrel. The clamp alone won't work and in one of my previous videos I recommended something that did work to create the seal but it made maintenance really unnecessarily messy. So I'm going to show you what not to do and what to do. The most important note of this video is to not use butyl tape. Okay, It works great to seal the lid of the swirl filter but it creates a horrible, horrible mess that makes maintenance, changing the water, so difficult and annoying. <laughs> so I solved it pretty simply. Guys, this is an absolute must. This modification from the butyl tape to this rubber gasket, so important for maintenance. Um, with the butyl tape, it was a total disaster as far as pulling off this lid. There was sticky goo everywhere. I dreaded cleaning this out. So with this rubber gasket, look at this, no mess, comes off super easy. Sorry to gross you out with the duck poop, but um, all I've done, measured the circumference, put the seal on, siliconed it with some waterproofing. By the way, I've linked everything in the description, uh, but you have to be sure, you have to measure your barrel, the lip, the width and the height of it, because they vary from barrel to barrel. And if you don't, that rubber gasket might not fit and then the lid to the barrel itself won't close once it's on. So double check that. Then as far as maintenance goes, you just spray out the barrel. It's really that simple. Uh, for my ducks, I've got two ducks. I have to do it like maybe like once a, every week or a week and a half. Then you just close the drain, you know, obviously with the lid back on and you're all set. It, it makes life so easy. Alrighty guys, that's my duck pool setup. I really hope this video helps you guys tackle this this issue that doesn't have to be an issue. Um, just simply by the efficiency of the pool setup. Um, because I remember like sitting out there for hours just like, ah, um, and you know, like trying out a sand filter, stuff that didn't work. Um, so this is what works. I've used it for years. Once again, I really hope this helps you out. I hope if you do implement the setup, you let me know how it works for you in the comments. If you're a new duck owner, congrats once again. And uh, I look forward to hearing your feedback as well. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your duckiness. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.